Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com and today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson we learned about the stochastic oscillator, an indicator which helps us gauge momentum in the market. In today's lesson we're going to learn about Bollinger Bands, an indicator which helps us gauge the volatility in the market as well as how high or low prices are relative to their historical price action. So let's get started. Okay, so Bollinger Bands are comprised of three bands, which are referred to as the upper band, the uh, lower band, and the center band. Um, the center band is a simple moving average, which is normally set at 20 periods, and the upper and lower band represent chart points that are two standard deviations away from the moving average. Uh, Bollinger Bands are designed to give traders a feel for what the volatility is in the market and how high or low prices are relative to the recent past. The basic premise of Bollinger Bands is that prices should normally fall within two standard deviations represented by the upper and lower band of the mean, which is uh, the center moving average line. If you're unfamiliar with what the standard deviation is, you can read about it in the link which I've included in the description section if you're watching this video on YouTube or one of the other video sites uh, or just below the video if you're watching it on informtrades.com. Um, as this is the case, trend reversals often occur near the upper or lower bands. Um, as the center line is, is a moving average which represents the trend in the market, uh, this line will also frequently act as support and resistance. The first way that traders use the indicators to identify potential overbought and oversold places in the market by watching for um, touches of the upper and lower uh, bands or trading outside of those bands which tend to represent extremes. Um, although some traders in the market use the, a close outside the upper or lower band as buy and sell signals, John Bollinger who developed the indicator recommends that this method should only be traded with the confirmation of other indicators. Um, outside of the fact that, as we've talked about in previous lessons, most traders would recommend confirming signals with more than one method, with Bollinger Bands specifically, um, prices that tend to hug or even trade outside of the upper or lower band for long periods of time, specifically in strong uptrends or downtrends, and that, that's obviously not a situation where you want to be positioning for a reversal. Um, so because of this, um, um, selling and selling the upper band and the, at the lower band is a technique that if you are going to use and actually a pretty good technique if, if used with other indicators uh, in range bound markets okay so that's what we're going to look at here um, you can see here is a chart of the Q's which is the NASDAQ ETF um, and you can see here we have a ranging market there we have a trending market here and you can see that in the ranging market we had multiple touches of both the upper and lower band but in the trending market uh, it was hugging the upper band for a good portion of that time now um, the trade setup here uh, we could look at you know just buying or selling on a touch of the upper and lower band but a better method would be to combine with another indicator which I've done with RSI here which you learned about two lessons ago and you can see that you've got a divergence here um, as price moves up to a new high but RSI does not confirm. So there would be your sell point, and then the buy point would be when the, uh, or, when the, or the close would be when the market pulls back off of the lower band, because in range-bound markets, we're anticipating that a move that starts at one end of the, uh, or one uh, extreme, the high band, is going to move all the way through to the low extreme, which is going to be the low band. Um, and so we don't want to get out of the trade before it's finished following through. If it goes into a downtrend, it continues to hug that bottom line. We want to be in that trade, so we're going to wait for a pullback off of the, uh, off of the bottom Bollinger Band line. Okay. Um, the second method is what's known as the Bollinger Band contraction, and in general, uh, after the uh, periods of low volatility in the market, um, the market tends to rally rather, rather significantly. Um, because, bull, you know, as we've learned in some of our other lessons, um, periods where the market doesn't move that much up or down are indication that neither the bulls nor the bears are winning. So when one side does win, uh, the market tends to tends to move pretty dramatically in the direction of the winning side, whether that be up or down. So low volatility is obviously represented by contracting Bollinger Bands, um, and high volatility would be represented by widening Bollinger Bands. 
So you can see here we have a contraction in the Bollinger Band there. Um, and then we have a break above the top Bollinger Band, meaning that the buyers have won out in this, in this situation, and we have a nice run up after that. Now, be careful when you're trading this strategy because um, if you do trade this strategy, because a lot of traders um, uh, say that uh, the first break above or below the uh, Bollinger Band line uh, tends to be a fake out so it actually reverses and goes in the opposite direction and a lot of traders will trade the second break um, to uh, to avoid getting faked out and pulled into a trade in the wrong direction um, Bollinger Bands, because they're uh, an indicator which is plotted on price, um, are just a good indicator to use with other things, such as some of the things that we've learned so far here. So by looking at this chart, and if you've been through some of our other lessons, you should be able to identify the double top there. Um, you should also be able to identify the divergence um, in that top, uh, which is represented by the relative strength index, meaning that not only do we have a double top, but going up into that second double top, um, there was a, a, a loss of momentum compared to the first top. So you can also see the touch of the Bollinger Band there, and that represented a pretty good move down in the market after that. Okay. Now, there's lots of uh, resources out there because Bollinger Bands is one of the most popular indicators. Um, so I've included a link to some of those below this video if you're watching it on informtrades.com or in the description section if you're watching it on YouTube or one of the other video sites. Um, as always, now that we're talking about strategies and everything, remember that trading is risky. Uh, nobody, certainly not me, can guarantee you profits. Um, you should design your own strategies. This is just meant for information purposes. Um, you know, make sure you do your homework before getting into the market and make, make sure that you're only trading with risk capital and that trading fits into your investment profile. Okay, so that's our lesson for today. In our next lesson, we're going to learn about something called the ADX or the Average Directional Index, which is going to help give us an indication of uh, the strength of the trends in the market, strength or weakness of trends in the market. So we hope to see you in that lesson. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below, and have a great day.